Hello folks. Welcome back. I was going to uh, think about conducting this particular video uh, under a live stream format, but I thought that there may be need for me to stop and pause and look at rules and talk about different, uh, just some different things before. So doing it live would probably um, make the videos substantially longer. Nevertheless, welcome back to Big Board. We're having a look at Beyond the Rhine. And I had started, uh, I think the last time I spoke with you, I had started looking at the, the uh, topography of uh, the maps and where some things had occurred historically, you know, uh, the market garden route and <clears throat> where the Colmar pocket was and the, uh, the, the split between Montgomery, Bradley and Patton's forces where those boundaries kind of lie. And in fact, you can generally speaking, see those boundaries on the map as well. They've got some, uh, some markers on the, on the map that uh, highlight where the broad front, broad front boundaries are. So that is all very interesting, yes. But as I got into it, the next thing I like to do with the game is, particularly with the OCS system, is take a look at supply and command ranges and then have a look at the road network and the rail network to see what if anything uh, you know jumps out at me that will I guess facilitate you know making a plan uh, for both sides in fact so uh, obviously with one side on the defensive uh, they the Germans have a little bit easier time uh, you know, tracing their routes back, uh, although they do have to be mindful of uh, getting across the Rhine, just like everybody else. But they have the interior lines, so they're they're really you know, looking okay. So I, I wasn't too fast, even on the Allied side, looking at <clears throat> you know the throw ranges for the various HQs. You know, the in move mode, the thirty core HQ has got a throw range of eight. Uh, and 12 on the uh, when it's uh, you know sta uh, stationary all the uh, is that 12 or 14 actually yeah it's 12 and the US ones are all 14 pretty much so big throw ranges you know we're going to use truck movement rate to do that there are some mitigating and uh, uh, minorly finicky rules around limited supply for the Germans uh, using uh, ports, uh, minor ports and ports to sort of drip feed folks so they don't uh, die uh, of starvation. So I didn't see a lot of stuff that was going to really uh, negatively affect a, a, a big offensive campaign. I think it, it versus the East Front here, it's going to be there are a lot more roads and a lot more main roads or primary roads as they're called here. And so it's going to be relatively easy to uh, throw and stretch, throw, throw supply and stretch those supply lines back to source uh, locations relatively easily, barring, of course, all those red hexes you can see in the distance, which are the, the, the west wall, west wall hexes, right? They uh, tend to run, they tend to cause some problems for supply. And we'll, we'll talk about those another time. But what this led me to, looking primarily in the north, by the way, uh, I, I didn't spend an uh, overt amount of time in the rougher terrain in the south, figuring more than likely we'll probably approach this somewhat historically and focus on the north a little bit. We might, uh, we might test the waters in the center here through the Ardennes. Because who doesn't like to try and drive through all that mess? Uh, and Patton's, uh, Patton's forces, as, as I started to lay those units out, they really have uh, quite a challenge ahead of them. There are, actually, there are actually some fairly strong... I'm sorry about the glare on the window there. Some fairly strong units. There's 3rd Panzer Grenadier, 15th Panzer Grenadier... There's uh, 17th Panzer Grenadier, excuse me, Panzer Grenadier formation here. 9th Panzer is over there. Uh, 21st Panzer is over here. Mostly not whole, but in pretty good shape, uh, uh, considering most of the other Panzer divisions up in the north have one or two units left in them. So a, a bad move here or a bad decision 
by patterns forces is really going to be expensive because I think it wouldn't take much if the supply was available and you can see the four supply points right here and another two here and uh, there's, uh, there's just one T there and there's three more SP over here to the right <coughs> so this really forms this kind of arc around this bulge that's kind of pushed its way towards the west wall and uh, it's it's a long skinny push there are some areas of defense here that would worry me as a as a commander my flanks are kind of uh, not highly not very well protected and in fact some of my some of my airfields are potentially exposed and supply lines are exposed although we can always we can always reroute uh, back across uh, across other primary roads or railroads. So that's why I decided that I wanted to put all the units out on the map, check it out, see what was going on, and then try and make some plans for both sides. As you can, so let's, I think what I'll do is we'll, we'll uh, kind of, have, let's have a look at the force layout across the entire board. And then we will, uh, then we'll let's dive into perhaps some potential strategies for both sides and we'll we'll see what what comes out right uh, <clears throat> so down in the south as i said one two three four five uh um let's call them armored formations mechanized formations that have the potential to be a threat with uh units here on the on the flank there's a division down here another one here uh, it's kind of ash and trash stuff there. Although there is one ten three two division down here, three a three rated unit is not a particularly high proficiency or effectiveness rating, but there's not much stopping them here. There's one division here which we could pop some breakdowns on and sort of build a defensive net here. Uh, depending on supply availability, this could be threatened coming in around uh, around this angle here. So. Tenuous. Now, the, the you know, we're not short on units as the as the U.S. Of course, we have fourth armored, seventh armored, and just underneath the camera, fifth armored is sitting right here. Uh, all of which could uh, be uh, levered or leveraged in this in this area. You'll note that the defensive line is very thin. Uh, there's not a lot of meat to it, so I could certainly see how an aggressive attack could potentially lunge us across. Uh, you know, the Mosul uh, at the very least, and then potentially down uh, in, the, in the Colmar pocket area uh, across, the, you know, across the Rhine there. Now, but the only problem is that it just doesn't lead us anywhere uh, other, unless we try and run for the, that exit, uh, exit victory condition I talked to you about, which is not an automatic victory condition, by the way. It's merely a, a one or two VP. I think it's one VP. Uh, condition and it's fairly expensive to, to execute on. Uh, you've got to get several uh, armored and infantry and head, headquarter and artillery units off the board and they don't come back. So it's going to depend very much on reinforcement rates and what else is coming on on the map and where we place those, those units and whose command they go under in this area depending to, to, to determine what we might do down here. Further up in uh, the Ardennes, uh, Belgium, uh, his liege here, right? This area also uh, a bit of a sticky wicket, right? You've got, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. No, I just don't have enough room on the map to put units down without knocking stuff over like I currently am. So you'll just have to trust me here. We've got third armored here. Uh, an element of third armored here and then first panzer, 12th panzer and parts of second panzer kind of holding the line around uh, Dinant here, Sini and uh, Martian Femem. I can't see that. Uh, is that an F? I think that's an F. Femem here with Bastogne being back here. So well, it looks like there's a, you know, somewhat of a 14th, uh, sorry, 7th Corps is sort of pushing this way. And 5th Armoured is over here on the right-hand side. They look like they could quite easily 
uh, plow the road here through uh, uh, Falsham Jaeger breakdown unit. There's a little uh, infantry breakdown unit. Hansa Lear is kind of is kind of lurking in the area. So an interesting, uh, another interesting opportunity to try and punch through the Sedan and or uh, uh, Charleville here. So interesting little uh, little opportunity here. Or as we as we move up the map further north, you know, Third Army could pivot. Uh, join up with uh, some of the British forces because this would be in the northern the northern sector and they could begin pushing this way. That put, puts them running smack dab into 9th Panzer, 10th Panzer and uh, basically the 2nd Panzer Army, 2nd Panzer Corps, I should say, uh, group of forces here and some very tough uh, Falsham Jaeger units aligned along the Elba Canal. Uh, we've got a couple of whole divisions back here that are in relatively good shape that could uh, deal some damage out. These are reserve markers that I've yet to, yet to place. Um, so Guards Army, 8th Army, oh, sorry, 8th Division, is that 8th Division or Brigade? That's 8th Brigade, actually. 8th Brigade, 4th Brigade, and 7th Armoured Division are all in this area. The Canadians and uh, other forces, 30 Corps, HQ, etc., are going to come on this turn, as will uh, the 19th, 8 Corps, 8 units here. There's a couple of divisions there. So, interesting set of choices. And one thing I am marveling at is also the uh, distinct lack of air. Yeah, this is it. Now, all of these uh, can be used. Um, now, in the first turn, we can actually, we can actually use these guys uh, this turn because we start out with limited weather, limited air weather, which means that uh, these guys are not on interdiction duty. And I do believe that then means that we can use them for regular bombing missions, which means they'll probably have to clip all those guys. But there's only six, eight air units and a handful on the map, very, very few on the map, uh, that we can leverage or lever to uh, help us execute our off our offensive wherever it might be. And uh, what was I going to say? And it's uh, oh, I forgot my train of thought. So support the attack, limited weather. Oh, no hip shoots this turn, which is bad for both sides. Uh, that means the traditional fly, uh, drive a recon unit up adjacent to an enemy um, enemy division, hip shoot it, DG it, and then attempt to overrun it and uh, push it out of the way is not available to us turn one. So the big breakthrough on turn one uh, looks like it needs to wait till turn two. Because uh, that's going to be interesting. Now we can begin planning for an airdrop. We do have four sea assaults. And I think that I will be uh, probably focused on uh, acquiring control of the shelled estuary as quickly as possible. Uh, once again, we'll see once we do some further assessment and thought about things. Uh, and we'll kind of, let's just pause things here for now. And I'll uh, talk to you guys in just a little bit.